What are your thoughts on failure? Does the prospect of failing embarrass you and hinder you from achieving your goals? Honestly, any individual or organization has its own share of problems. Even the biggest private rocket company, helmed by Elon Musk, SpaceX, is famous for its explosive setbacks. However, the distinguishing factor between those who succeed from the rest lies in how they respond to failure. And recently, ULA has witnessed a major explosion of their rocket. So let's see how ULA and SpaceX handle the subject of failure in today's episode of Great SpaceX. United Launch Alliance suffered a major setback during testing late last month. No one was injured, but the accident made for dramatic visuals. A column of burning clear hydrogen shot up into a mushroom cloud that dwarfed the test stand. Their test article is definitely more than just damaged. The anomaly was captured on video cameras operated by Blue Origin, which is restoring a nearby test stand. Located about 100 meters from the United Launch Alliance facility, Blue Origin has invested more than $100 million in NASA's old test stand 4670 for acceptance testing of its BE-4 and BE-3U rocket engines. A Blue Origin source confirmed that a mushroom cloud formed from the anomaly. It's worth mentioning that afterward, United Launch Alliance asked Blue Origin to delete the explosive video footage from the company's computers, which Blue Origin agreed to. However, after the considerable buzz surrounding this unfortunate event, this week Bruno himself finally released a video of the explosion. He admitted hydrogen leak, H2 accumulated inside the rig, found an ignition source, burned fast, overpressure caved in our forward dome, and damaged the rig. Tori also confirms that May 4th as planned is not achievable for the debut launch of Vulcan. My understanding is they need about four weeks from the time of the flight readiness firing at the Cape, and this has not occurred yet. Time is running out for ULA to complete the development of Vulcan and fly two certification missions this year. This would allow the vehicle to begin flying national security payloads for the Space Force. ULA had hoped to fly its first national security mission in 2023, but now that seems virtually impossible. In the end, spacecraft development is a risky and sometimes explosive business. Just a scratch, Elon Musk said about ULA's accident. Musk is actually more optimistic than Bruno himself, and this is one reason his companies are always at the top of any list. Now, gather around, boys and girls, and let me tell you a story about how SpaceX's first slew of failures led up to its most pivotal moment in the company's growth. Back on August 2nd of 2008, SpaceX launched its third flight of the Falcon 1 launch vehicle, the predecessor to the Falcon 9 launch vehicles that the company flies today. It was a defining moment for the company. Elon had a couple of years prior stated in the press that his $100 million personal investment in the company would get us up to three tries, and if SpaceX couldn't be successful by the third flight, they may have to admit defeat. In addition to the pressure created by this narrative in the press, the lobbyist armies of their competitors had been in overdrive in DC trying to undermine SpaceX and damage their credibility by painting them as too risky and inexperienced in order to protect their multi-billion dollar interests in the space launch business. The result, SpaceX executed a picture-perfect flight of the first stage clearing some of the highest risk points of the mission. However, shortly after the first stage flight immediately following stage separation, SpaceX lost the vehicle and, ergo, the mission. The team knew something had gone wrong in a big way. Musk and about seven to eight of the most senior technical people at SpaceX were commanding the mission from a trailer in the back of the Hawthorne factory, and all SpaceX staff waited anxiously for the trailer door to open for someone to say something. The mood in the building hung thick with despair. You have to keep in mind that by this point, SpaceX was only six years old, and many people had been working 70 to 80 plus hours a week, swimming against extremely powerful currents, like difficult barriers in technology, institution, politics, and finance, 
by sheer force of their blood and sweat. They had all given so much, were mentally and physically exhausted, and really needed a win in order to replenish their spiritual wells, and give them the faith to keep following this man up a treacherous mountain that had depleted the hopes and resources of many others who had come to conquer it before. That night would forever impact the future of the company. It had the potential to send the company into a downward spiral from which they may not have ever recovered from. A failure in leadership would have destroyed the company not only in the eyes of the press or potential consumers, but it would have destroyed them internally. When Elon came out, he walked past the press and first addressed the company. We knew this was going to be hard. It is, after all, rocket science. Then listed the half dozen or so countries who had failed to even successfully execute a first stage flight and get to outer space. A feat they had accomplished successfully that day. But they needed to pick themselves up and dust themselves off because they had a lot of work to do. Then Musk said, with as much fortitude and ferocity as he could muster after having been away for about 20 plus hours by this point, that, for my part, I will never give up, and I mean never, and that if they stuck with him, they'd win. It was the most impressive display of leadership that anyone could have ever witnessed at the time. Within moments, the energy of the building went from despair and defeat to a massive buzz of determination as people began to focus on moving forward instead of looking back. This shift happened collectively across all 300 plus people in a matter of not more than 5 seconds. It was an unbelievably powerful experience. But then what happened in the days and weeks following that night is nothing short of a series of miracles. Within a matter of hours, the SpaceX team identified the likely cause of the launch failure. Typically, turnaround time from others in the launch business can range from weeks to months for failure investigations. But that team combed through every ounce of data to make sure they understood exactly what went wrong as quickly as possible. And by August 6th, they announced the results of their investigation and came 100% clean with the supporters and customer community in order to make sure they could retain their trust in this difficult time. In only seven weeks, they had another rocket fully manufactured, integrated, and on location, ready to fly again. No one else could have done this in less than six months with unlimited human and financial resources but SpaceX did it in six weeks with less than 400 people and on a restricted financial diet. On September 28th of 2008, SpaceX flew its Falcon 1 launch vehicle from Kwajalein Atoll in the South Pacific and executed its first 100% successful launch, becoming the world's first privately built rocket to achieve Earth orbit. An accomplishment of truly epic portions proportions and a task previously completed by only six of the mightiest nations in the history of the world. A much needed and much deserved victory for the entire SpaceX team as it hopefully will turn out for the future of humanity overall. Yes, Falcon 9 is now the most launched among US rockets and this in my opinion is the true character of Elon Musk. Undeterred in the face of all odds, undaunted by the fear of failure, and forged in the battlefields of some of the most terrifyingly technical and capital intensive challenges that any human being could choose to take on. And somehow, he comes out alive every time with the other guy's head on a silver platter. The upcoming Starship will serve as another testament to the notion that embracing failure is a necessary step towards achieving success. And with that, today's episode has come to its end. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.